Coming up, Jonathan Davenport is a Flow Racing Champion, and we talk Trophy Cup and the Keith Coons Give Back Classic. Let's do this. Today is Thursday, October 21st, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. We talked yesterday on the show about the points situation with the Flow Racing at Night in America late models between Jonathan Davenport and Kyle Larson. But last night at Bulls Gap, Jonathan Davenport just went ahead and ended it. He started fourth, made a big move to second on the first lap, and then bided his time behind leader Ross Bales. Coming to 13 laps to go, Superman threw a big slider at Bales 79 and was able to hold him off coming back to the line. From there, the 49 machine drove away through lap traffic to bag the $10,000 victory. In doing so, Davenport not only became the first driver to win multiple series races, but he also locked up the championship with one race remaining and earned an additional twenty grand. Larson did just about everything he could as he started fifth behind JD and ended up finishing second after he used some big moves to get by guys like Hudson O'Neill and Bales. But Davenport was too good through lap traffic late in the going for Larson to be able to really mount a challenge. So now, even if Larson were to win next week at Tri-County, Davenport has done enough to clinch the title. Behind Davenport and Larson, Ricky Weiss finished third, O'Neill was fourth, and Corey Hedgecock finished fifth. Early leader Ross Bales fail, uh, faded to sixth at the end. So the only race left for the Flow Racing Night in America late models this season is one week from today at Tri-County Raceway for $10,000 to win. If you didn't watch last night, you can see replays of the action over on Flow. Through the various late model events this season in which we've gotten to see Larson, this little rivalry between he and Davenport that's developed has been really fun to watch. I don't have specific knowledge, but on the surface, it seems like there's a ton of respect there between the two drivers, and they generally seem to have a good time racing each other. They're both in probably fairly equally prepared Longhorn chassis, so you get to see a pretty level comparison between the two when they're on the track together. Last night's show at Volunteer was a nice example of it, with Larson trying to track him down late, and even in their post-race interviews, they refer to each other. Davenport made mention of looking at the scoreboard and seeing the six rising through the field. And I think that's one of the cooler aspects of this Flow series this season, is it's given us the opportunity to watch a heavyweight like Davenport get challenged by an all-timer like Larson. This is just something we haven't gotten to witness maybe ever. Really good stuff, I think, from both guys, and hopefully we'll get to see more of it a few times later this season. For late model fans, Lucas is obviously now done for the year, and the Outlaws remain quiet until World Finals. There's still plenty of money on the line this weekend for late models. Alltech in Florida has a nice 26000 to win crate show. Supers will be battling for 25000 to win up at Bedford in Pennsylvania. Why Not in Mississippi has a 15000 to win race. There's also an Ironman show at I-75, a Southern All-Stars race at Sonoya, and a 10000 to win show at Cherokee. Several of them will be available on the streaming services if you can't get out to the racetrack. And you can find all of those on the dirttracker.com streaming schedule through the weekend. Out west at Thunderbolt Raceway in Tulare, California, the Trophy Cup gets underway starting tonight. The three-day event for 360 Sprint Cars has drawn a massive field, and they will battle it out for over $200,000 in prize money through Saturday night. The event was not run in 2020 for obvious reasons, which makes Rico Abreu the defending Trophy Cup winner from back in 2019. This will be the 27th edition of the to uh, Trophy Cup, with past winners including Jack Hoddenshield, Shane Golubic, Kyle Larson, Jason Myers, Brad Sweet, and all three Katings. Tonight and Friday are full programs with drivers earning points to help set up Saturday's action. Saturday will feature D-mains for those cars lower than 48th in the standings, with cars higher slotted into heat races, and then a subsequent C-main, B-main, and the feature. The driver with the most points following Saturday's A-main will receive the winner's share of the points purse. At last check, there are 107 entries expected, and the list is deep, with it including not only California's best, but guys from really all over the country. The local contingent includes names like Kyle Hurst, Justin Sanders, Michael Ficino, Caleb Henry, Colby Koblin, Justin Cox, Shane Golubic, Chase Johnson, the Carrick brothers, Dominic Selzy, both Tim and Bud Kading, Corey Day, Mitchell Moles, DJ Neto, and a lot more. 
But a group of more nationally known racers is coming in to challenge for the big money, and that list includes Justin Peck, Anthony Macri, Buddy Kofoid, Car- uh, Carson and Austin McCarl, Tyler Courtney, Rico Abreu, Corey Eliason, Cole Macedo, and others. And yes, I know that Kofoid and Rico and Eliason and Macedo are all from California, but they're not really local or regional guys anymore. This thing is shaking, uh, shaping up to be a dogfight with all of the talent, and there are going to be some potent combinations to fight with. Courtney is in a Roth car along with Mitchell Moles. Kofoid is in the Works 57 with Paul Silva on the wrenches. Eliason in his, uh, is in his Rudine machine, and Magri is in a Tyner Hirsch ride. As for possible winners, you certainly can't rule out Rico here. I'm also excited to see Kofoid and Silva together, but this might be a good year for the locals. Sanders and Selzy have been stout all season, and some of the young talent, guys like Corey Day, will be looking to show out this weekend. Grandstands open today at 3.30 local time with qualifying at 4.45. If you can't be at Tulare, the cushion has live streams, but they're a bit pricey. A three-day pass to watch is $97, while individual buys of Thursday and Friday will set you back $32, and Saturday is $40. They do mention that a portion of the price is going to the the Make-A-Wish Foundation. To keep up all weekend, follow at trophy underscore underscore cup on Twitter and hit up trophycup dot uh, trophycup.org, excuse me. Elsewhere tonight, the Keith Coons Give Back Classic gets underway at Port City Raceway. The 600cc micro event will award the winner their choice of either $15,000 or a ride with Keith Coons at the 2020, uh, 2022 Chili Bowl. It was at this event last season that Brian Carber was the winner, and he chose the money over the ride, but that wasn't good enough for his fans and the community. They ended up putting together a GoFundMe and got Carber a ride with Coons at the Chili Bowl anyway. He went on to finish 12th on his prelim night and 12th in a C-Main in the Coons Midget. This year, the field is deep yet again with more than 60 cars expected. They're splitting the competitors into prelim nights Thursday and Friday with Saturday crowning the champion. Besides a whole host of young talent, the field also includes heavy hitters like Christopher Bell, Tanner Thorson, Dazen Persley, and Cannon McIntosh. Keep an eye, too, on names like Brent Cruz, Bryant Wiedemann, Brenham Crouch, and Gavin Boeschel. Hot laps get underway tonight at 6 p.m. local, and if you can't be at Port City, you can watch the live stream with your subscription to Mav TV+. Speaking of that streaming schedule today, um, there are three items on it. Night one of the Trophy Cup on the Cushion, like I just said. Also, night one of the Keith Coons Give Back Classic on Mav TV+, and Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope you have a good Thursday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily. 